All right, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to this certificate in OER librarianship information session today. Uh, I appreciate it. This is for the 2022 cohort, just as a reminder. Uh, and my name is Tanya Groves. I'm the Director of Educational Programs for the Open Ed Network. Um, and it is my privilege to be the manager of this program. And I get to work with such wonderful people. Um, and several of them have showed up today. Um, so I am recording this session, uh, just so you know. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get going as people continue to filter in. So today, I want to talk to you about the Certificate in OER Librarianship Program. Uh, so we'll provide a little description, overview, components, objectives, and costs. Uh, then um, it is my privilege to introduce some instructors for the program who can share uh, with you about the program from their perspective. Um, some wonderful alumni uh, have decided to come back and share their experience with the program, and then we'll open up um, for some questions. This is not a super formal time, so if you'd like to interrupt by unmuting or putting it in a chat, please feel free to do so um, as any of us talk through any of these points. Okay, so let's get going. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the Certificate in OER Librarianship, um, entering now its fourth cohort, uh, is a professional development program that will create effective open education program leaders who want to be stewards and advocates for open educational resources. So this program was originally funded by a Laura Bush 21st Century Librarian Program grant from IMLS in 2018. It's explicitly for librarians every year. We do get questions about that. Uh, every year we faithfully discuss it as a team of instructors uh, and curriculum designers and we talk about it um, and have decided that that is still an appropriate way forward. Um, but anybody who has questions can always contact me uh, to discuss that. Um, as I said, it's entering its fourth cohort. Uh, and this program offers formal training, a community of peers and expert mentors. It seeks to build sustainable, collaborative and effective open ed programs. And the time commitments that we have uh, approximated every year and run by participants is about four to six hours per week. Um, that's especially true, I think, during the online uh, course time, which takes about 10 weeks. Um, every module takes two weeks to complete. Um, and of course, it's based on reading and we have optional reading and you can go deeper. So we're trying to reflect kind of that range of time and, and reflective of reading as well, reading rates. So uh, the program completes Components. There is a 10 week online course beginning typically the end of February and this year it will be February of 2022. Then there are five months of monthly synchronous cohort meetings uh, running through September of 2022 um, and that will culminate in an action plan and that's highly customizable to your institutional needs. We have a template um, that you can follow, but the mentors or instructors are um, very in tune with what your needs are and what your institutional needs are. Um, so we are very willing to work with you and be flexible as to um, the plans components um, because we want it to be usable and practical for you. Uh, in terms of the learning objectives of this program, it's gaining fluency in defining open ed, identifying local collaborations and alliances, not only at your institution, but perhaps uh, within a larger system. Uh, we would like you to be able to design and build sustainable open ed programming, develop strategies for measuring and articulating the impact of open education, and we want you to connect and collaborate with librarians dedicated to developing OER initiatives across the country. Um, we are committed to continuous improvement. And so right now I'm in the midst of reading all of the survey feedback um, from all the modules that we uh, compile and take in. And then there's an end of program survey that's given to uh, the, the librarians administration 
uh, their direct supervisor, and of course the end of program uh, responses from the from the librarians themselves. And so right now I'm in the midst of uh, reading through all that survey feedback. Um, the instructors then join me and we uh, basically revise based upon that feedback. So every year it's really important to us uh, that we're taking in that feedback and acting upon it uh, collectively. Uh, the program cost for this year for members, and that includes allied members, uh, is $670. Uh, if you're affiliated through an OEN system or consortia, uh, it's $920. Um, and then if you're a non-member, it's $1,170. Um, we uh, are thankful and grateful that every year we've been able to uh, give financial assistance, which is available. Um, and those librarians who, who need financial assistance will be asked to submit a letter, letter of support uh, explaining the financial need from a colleague or supervisor. Um, every year we've been able to meet all of those requests, so we're very thankful for that. Um, in addition, in an effort to address the shortage of librarians of color in open education, we are offering some full scholarships uh, to those who fit the Black, Indigenous, or People of Color categories. Um, and again, uh, every year that we've been offering it, I believe this is our third year, um, we have been able to award uh, those needing this scholarship um, with it. So we are really thankful. And so please uh, feel free uh, to encourage the librarians in your institutions who fit this to and, and who need financial assistance or the scholarship to please apply. Some of the benefits uh, that you will hear. Yes, thank you, Cheryl, for adding in that last year some consortia also offered assistance. As a matter of fact, I think seven six or seven consortia offered assistance. So if you belong to a consortia, please reach out to your consortial lead to see if there's financial assistance available for this program. Um, some of the benefits, but not all, I'm quite sure you're gonna hear more benefits from the instructors and particularly uh, the alumni. Um, but some of the, the benefits are connections with librarians from all over the nation. Uh, as I'm reading through the survey feedback from this year, that always comes through so strongly that people just appreciate uh, getting connected with other people doing this good work um, and, and getting their uh, problems answered and some solutions. And so that's really um, a joy to be able to connect people. In addition, the, the uh, cumulative action plan at the end that provides a robust template of next steps has been uh, a benefit, a strong one. Examples, best practices and resources in a course shell that you have access to for a year um, after graduation from the certificate program. And then there is at the end a professional certificate earned. Um, it is not a credit bearing certificate, but it is certainly a professional certificate that is um, an acknowledgement of the achievement of finishing this program. Um, so uh, this year, um, the, this, these are our instructors, Will Cross, Cheryl Casey. Cheryl, sorry for not changing your name on this slide. I'm just now seeing that. Mandy Goodset, Jeannie Hoover, Wade Oshiro, uh, Elaine Thompson, Lily Todoranova, and Michael Whitchurch. Uh, these are our fabulous instructors, and I'm so pleased that we will retain them all for next year. Um, so next up, I would like to give a few minutes to, to Jeannie Hoover, uh, who's one of our wonderful instructors, to talk about her experience with the program. Jeannie? Thank you, Tanya. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jeannie Hoover, and I'm at East Carolina University down in North Carolina. Um, this is the second year, this past year is the second year that I've been an instructor for the program. And I have to say one of my favorite things about um, being an instructor is meeting everyone in the cohorts, um, working with my cohort, and um, also seeing how everybody is going to apply their action plans. And um, everyone's doing amazing work, and it's, it's really exciting to see. Um, but Wade and I um, just wanted to highlight some specific things. Uh, we wanted to mention that this program is appropriate to both beginner and advanced OER librarians. So if you weren't sure about that, definitely take a look at the program. 
um, participants are broken down into cohorts, which are oftentimes um, broken down by type of institution. So you may be together with um, others in community colleges, et cetera. So that's, that's helpful when you're tackling um, the curriculum portion of the program. And then also um, in the second portion where we have the cohorts meeting, kind of talking about um, the problems that you're facing, some strategies to address those, and different ways to build your, your action plan. So I have to say the cohort itself is a really great ex experience. It's a supportive environment. Um, I think all of us learn from each other, um, whether you're new or experienced, we're all bringing that, our own personal experiences to the cohort and um, you know, really growing from each other. So the, as Tanya mentioned, that's another way to connect with others who are doing similar things as you, also some, great people to talk to after the program, um, when you're running into issues, um, people that you can, can turn to. Uh, we also wanted to kind of mention how this program might be different from some of the other programs out there. Um, for example, the Spark Open Education Leadership Program. Um, with this one, your output is an action plan. So it's really a roadmap for um, an OER initiative on your campus. So it's really customized to your campus. Um, whether you're new or advanced, it's taking your program to that next level. So if you're new, um, how to set up the program, how to take that to your supervisor or administration and plan those next steps. Uh, if you're an advanced, sort of how to take your program to the next level. Um, other other programs like the Spark Open Education Program, um, they do have a curriculum piece of it, but then they also have a capstone project. And that one is more an individualized um, project where uh, you might be looking at a, a gap on your, your campus that you might wanna fill, or maybe a gap that you see um, in open education as a whole. Um, so that's kind of how those are a little bit different. In this program, you have a cohort that you're, you're working with in uh, the SPARK program, you're working one-on-one -on -one with a mentor. So there's a little bit of difference there. I would say if you have never done an action plan for your institution, so really made plans, um, looking at goals for your OER initiative, um, talking to administrators, this program, it might be a really great fit for you to kind of set those um, components and have a workable plan at the end. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Wade, who will talk a little bit more in depth about the program. Well, thanks, Jeannie. Um, my name is Wade Oshiro, and I, am, um, I serve as the Learning Commons and Library Coordinator at Leeward Community College in Hawaii. And I've been uh, working uh, and leading uh, our campus, as well as our, um, our CC system OER initiatives uh, since about 2014. So I've been doing this for a little while. Um, this was my first year uh, serving as an instructor. So I'm one of uh, two newbies, uh, two newbie instructors. And um, I'm just maybe, you know, Jeannie really mentioned uh, a lot of the, um, you know, the benefits of the program. So I'll kind of just add to, um, you know, what she's already said, you know, I, I definitely think that, um, you know, the way this program is uh, structured is, uh, is really a good opportunity for those of you who are, um, you could be a uh, new, um, someone newly assigned to OER, new to, uh, and just learning, or you could be someone that's been doing this for a while, but, um, you know, and maybe not um, have had the time to uh, you know, work on an action plan. You know, this, this program gives you that um, space, the structure uh, to, uh, and it's over the course of quite a few months to develop this really um, uh, well-formed action plan, definitely designed uh, and aligned to your institution's, um, you know, your institution's mission, um, the resources that you have, the capacity. Um, and it's a plan that, um, you know, you can, once the, the program is over, uh, you can, you know, share out with your administrators and show them that you have this very intentional approach to um, building a program. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, 
is required uh, during the, um, the online portion of the, the program is that um, we ask that you meet with one of your administrators to find out exactly what they uh, want uh, with OER um, and um, use that uh, understanding to kind of just build a rapport, build um, this relationship that will, um, once the, the action plan is complete, you can share out with them. And um, hopefully, you know, by then you will have developed uh, that, that support that can allow you to actually implement um, your plan. Um, some other things I can mention is that, you know, definitely I think the, um, the early part, the online course uh, portion of the program from February to May, you know, it's very, that's the, the, the part of the program that's very structured. And as Tanya mentioned, there are, you know, assignments, you know, readings, uh, and they're kind of uh, chunked into uh, two week modules. Um, so this is a, the, the part of the um, plan that, uh, excuse me, the program that, you know, sometimes can um, be challenging for um, some, some uh, you know, for all of us, because, you know, you're going to be in this program if you do uh, decide to uh, join, um, but also be doing your, your day job. And so with my cohort, you know, I had um, all community college uh, librarians and for um, quite a few of them, they were like solo librarians or they were library directors. So they had a whole slew of responsibilities and the program itself, while we do have, um, you know, the deadlines, you know, the instructors are flexible and we understand that, you know, you're busy and there may be times where, you know, you might fall behind. And our job is just to ensure that, you know, uh, if you, you know, have other commitments and aren't able to keep to the, the stated deadlines that, you do actually complete the assignments because that's something that we really uh, want um, all of you to do um, because the assignments are serve as the building blocks for your action plan. So nothing that you're doing uh, is going to go for not, you know, it's going to all be uh, integrated into your, um, your action plan. Um, and then, you know, within the cohort, I think uh, what I really valued was the diversity of experiences. So we had, I had, you know, uh, librarians that are very new, starting to build a program, not getting much traction yet on their campuses. So really the important part was uh, building awareness and having a plan for that. And then I had, um, you know, cohort um, members uh, that were pretty far along, have, had done a lot, but wanted this opportunity to um, kind of create um, a sustainable OER program. And so it was really about developing uh, a structure policies that could uh, go live beyond uh, that one person. So to expand uh, their program so that it was sustainable in the long term. But um, yeah, I mean, those are just some of the things uh, that I, I thought were valuable. And as instructors, we, we give feedback throughout the entire course. Um, and then definitely um, the monthly synchronous meetings that start in the summer are really a great opportunity for uh, everyone to come together and um, to kind of just share, share what they're doing. Um, it was also a time where, uh, you know, uh, we shared challenges, right? What you were, um, what people were experiencing, you know, the day-to-day -day kind of experiences and, you know, getting um, feedback from, uh, you know, uh, the fellow um, participants was really, uh, I think a value to, um, uh, I hope it was a value to co cohort members, but yeah, thank you so much for allowing me the time to share. Thank you, Wade. Uh, I've so appreciated uh, you and Michael joining uh, our team. Um, and it's been such a value add. So thank you so much, Jeannie and Wade, uh, for sharing your perspectives from an instructional uh, uh, perspective. Um, next, we're going to move to um, our alumni testimonials. Um, to see what the former uh, participants themselves have to say uh, about, um, about the program. And first up is Kathy Esmiller uh, from Oklahoma State University. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being with us. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. And I'm excited to have the chance to talk about what a great experience this was uh, to work through this and to work through it with such a, a wonderful cohort of like minded people. Um, my Attendance was sponsored by Gwila. Uh, they offered some scholarships, and so I applied for a scholarship. And then I think my library had to pick up a little bit 
uh, to supplement that. So definitely exploring the options through uh, or other organizations your library might be part of is a great idea. Um, as was mentioned, the, the, the physical deliverable um, of an action plan uh, was has been energizing for my program and has given us uh, lots of places to work from. But I, I definitely want to highlight the benefit of the collaboration and the community, um, it, even during a pandemic, the opportunity to come together with with other people practicing in other places uh, and learn what's going on in their communities was, I think, I hesitate to ever say the most valuable, uh, but really it maybe was. I think that at the heart of open is humanity and relationships. And I think this is very much a program that centered being able to step into those spaces. Um, but for us, I think it's a great, the OEN certificate is super for starting out, getting started, wonderful for that. The, the design of it, of, uh, the instructional design, I think is just fantastic. It was really well done. Um, but we were in a place where we also needed to uh, kind of transition to the next level. We'd already implemented a human performance technology analysis uh, to our program and it had uh, articulated uh, what we needed to do to get to where we wanted to be. And this opportunity to develop an action plan is what made us able to put legs on that. And uh, since I, we came out of it and through the connections and the conversations we were guided to have over the course of the certificate, um, as we emerged from it, uh, I've, I've ended up now with my team has grown. Um, I've got two student interns that have been hired to work uh, with the program. Uh, we've hired a whole additional librarian uh, who will have significant responsibilities partnering with OER. Um, we happened to hit the $500,000 $500, mark, which apparently you can also say is half a million, and that sounds really cool. And because we have this action plan and can say so clearly where we plan to go, um, our communications team and administration are very comfortable publicizing that we've hit that mark. So I feel like the deliverable and the experience of this certificate prepared me to be able to hand um, a lot of folks exactly what they needed in order to equip us to grow. If that makes any sense, the people that need, you know, uh, charts and diagrams and metrics uh, because of this certificate uh, and the way they scaffold this through, we, we had it, um, gives my people something to work with. So what else, the template for the action plan uh, was such a such a great thing. I'd wanted to build one, I, but it's one of, you know, ah, when are you gonna do it? This moves it to the front burner, which is fantastic. Uh, and what was the other thing I wanted to make sure that we highlighted? Um, oh, that I'm part of a, a statewide uh, group also that's advocating for open in Oklahoma and three of us on that team have completed uh, this program and because of that we're even more equipped to craft a statewide uh, action plan. Um, so this just the, the implications for this uh, at your in your own personal practice uh, at your library at your university and then even beyond as you reach out to your state are, are are significant and measurable. So I would say go for it. It was a great investment of time and energy and uh, also money. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, I appreciated everything you shared. Um, and you're right, half a million is impressive and it sounds impressive because it is. So thank you so much. Um, I'd like to welcome Gabby Hernandez to share a little bit about her experience next. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Gabby Hernandez. I'm the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, and I was accepted to be a part of this certification program during the 2020 cohort. Um, and so it was really great, you know, also talking about uh, working together as a group and a team because as all we were all shifting to an online and virtual experience, so was this cohort. So we were able to all shift together. Um, so it was really nice to be a part of that community. And at UTRGV, we had a budding OER initiative, and I was hired as a part-time OER librarian. So when I applied for this certificate program, what I was really looking for was guidance. And so if you feel like you have a lot on your plate, I was able to work part-time and complete the certificate. So uh, I kind of say like, you know, uh, I didn't have a lot of different hats, but I definitely had that smaller amount of time and it really, really did help the time that I applied to this certificate was really, really worth it. Um, and it was perfectly suited to my needs as a new librarian and trying to build what was already in place by Oscar Ali Communications Librarian. 
and it provided me a great introduction to the world of open education because again it was my first time in an academic setting and it gave me a real sense of community and a place where I could feel comfortable asking questions, being new um, and learn during, in my profession, like I said, during this very trend, this really unique transition to virtual. Um, and creating the action plan to help me understand how to best plan out our program, as well as think through how I would interact with the various stakeholders. And I really liked that where, you know, it was how do you talk to students and what's the student perspective when what's necessary and what do you, what do you need to talk to administrators and planning all of that and having all of those things in mind while I created my action plan helped me realize all the different people and the pieces that I needed to put together um, and to think about going forward. And so after graduating with the certificate, I felt like I had a huge leg up in my role as the open education librarian, which I now sit in full time at UTRGV. And it was just, it gave me such a solid platform to launch both myself and our program. And I could focus my time thinking about new initiatives and where we can go next instead of kind of feeling lost and like, where, where do I go? That action plan gave me, you know, that pathway and the guidance of where can I take my initiative next and what is the next steps to think about um, at UTRGV. And so I am just so appreciative for the time, for the professional development, for my mentor and the community, the greater community that I got to learn from and the guidance I received. Um, and yeah, I, I feel the same um, as what Kathy said, now I have a open education graduate assistant. And so with the action plan, we were able to justify how we, how and why our, um, our initiatives need to grow, you know, how much funding, you know, what can extra people do. And so I just, I highly recommend it. It was such a wonderful experience. And uh, if you're, if you're questioning on whether, you know, the time is worth it, because we do all have a lot, it's 1000% worth it to take those couple hours a week to put into this, because it really will help your initiatives grow. Thank you so much, Gabby. I appreciate everything that you shared. Uh, next up is Jeffrey Potter. And thank you for thank you, Jeff, for being with us today. Hello, everyone. Uh, I appreciate the invitation to to share my experience with everyone. I was I am on a community college librarian, so I was um, uniquely interested in the program because last year was the first time um, they had a cohort just for community college librarians. And that was one of the main reasons why I applied was because I knew that the individuals I would be working with um, knew the circumstances and challenges and opportunities that community colleges face with OERs and librarians um, wearing multiple hats um, as well. The other thing that I would like to mention more than anything is the activities, the content um, that is put together in this program are, are building blocks into investigating the circumstances and opportunities within um, your college or your university. And um, that, that is one item that I found most valuable um, because as I completed the assignments and read the content, I was able to go back and look at my college's initiative and look at the library's place within that initiative. And I was able to craft um, an action plan that helped the library move forward with OERs, but also um, articulated what um, librarians can do for faculty in a community college setting. Um, Third, I would like to say, like with everyone else, um, all the other alumni have said, it's worth your time and the instructors um, provide valuable insights and support and the, the cohorts um, provide support in understanding what unique challenges um, you uh, may be facing. Um, 
that was another takeaway that I would not have if um, I didn't participate in the um, um, OER program. And last, but certainly not least, um, and I echo this um, um, with the other alumni, this is achievable. Um, the time you spend during the week um, completing assignments and doing the course readings and putting together your action plan, they've done it in such a way that it's all manageable. And um, that is another, um, another reason why um, I, I have come to appreciate um, the OER program and their certificate that I earned at the end. The other thing that I've mentioned, the other thing I like to mention is that I was um, one of the individuals in the cohort that um, had a program established and that needed to move it forward um, because the content is structured in such a way to customize to everyone's unique situation. I was able to take that and spin it and apply it to my individual circumstances at my college. Um, and I couldn't have done that in other um, OER programs. Um, so that's another highlight that I like to mention. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Uh, the final alumnus today who is willing to share her time with us is Carol Traveny. So thank you, Carol, for being with us. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Um, it's really a pleasure to be able to um, have this opportunity to speak, so thank you. Um, my name is Carol Traveny. I'm the library director of the Swedenborg Library, and that's at Bryn Athen College, which is a small, liberal, and I'm talking small, um, 280 to 300 students um, soaking wet, um, a liberal arts college uh, right outside Philadelphia. Um, just a little bit of background about the school. We are slowly becoming more diverse. Um, right now, we're about 50% um, of our students are white. They're generally within a traditional age range. Um, and the thing that really struck me is that 40% of our students are first generation college students. And that overwhelmingly, our students are receiving financial aid, including about 58% that are eligible for Pell Grants. So um, I'm doing this because I was a first generation student and the first in my family to attend college. So I relate to some of the struggles that our, some of our students are having. And I wanted to be able to find a way to give back to some kind of positive change at Bryn Athen. Um, we don't have an OER program as of yet. So I'm trying to be a little bit of a pioneer here. Um, one of the things I can say about this wonderful program is um, the very first thing that came to mind when I found out about it and signed up, was, don't try this alone. Uh, I became interested in OER and open education several years ago, but um, doing my little Google searches and deep diving into research online, I was really frankly overwhelmed by the, the amount of resources that were available. And also I have no background in education. So I'm not a teacher. Um, I was an art major before library school. But anyway, I realized um, that in order for something like this to succeed for us, it had to be an institutional initiative. So we, I had to somehow find buy-in um, from the campus, from our students, especially from our faculty and from our administration. And so I started looking around um, to figure out if I could find any place that would maybe give me this training. And happily, I did find out about the Open Education Network Certificate Program. Um, there are many, many benefits to doing this. And I have to echo everyone else before me to say that it's definitely worth the time. I would almost go as far as saying it's been really transformative in the way that I think about education, in the way I think about my position in the library, in the way I think about our campus. Um, the first thing about it, especially for an introvert like me, is the community. Community, community, community. There are just so many wonderful, passionate people out there um, who are very generous and able to share all sorts of knowledge. Um, also, there's the, the global and local perspectives you get. Um, I have to say, not just with 
the members of my cohort, which were wonderful, um, also my mentor. And um, it, it just makes you feel like you're not, you're not in this alone and you really aren't. There are people that you can reach out to um, and make it easier to reach out to the people in campus because you'll see that other schools or other librarians are having similar, similar struggles or similar victories. So um, that, that's a great uh, way to be. To, to be involved in something like that. Uh, also, the this particular certificate, I think, in, in the main, really helped me to learn how to navigate the open education o, and OER universe, because the, the big thing about it and the, the plan that we put together and all the assignments that led up to it um, really helped me learn how to put the pieces together, both aspirationally to decide what was good for our campus, but also realistically, because like I said, we're a very tiny school, we're very small staff. Um, so what things can we do at our level to make this work? Uh, I think that the timing for me and maybe for Bryn Athen College or other schools like ours is that the pandemic really brought an extra awareness to accessibility, to affordability, um, things like that. Um, it didn't hurt to also have that our college is currently um, in the final phases of preparing for our middle states or our MSCHE accreditation, which was a huge, um, a huge project in the past year or two. Um, I have to say that it did um, compete with, for time but I think that the overwhelming um, look at assessment, look at best practices, look at what we're doing now, what we can be doing, really brought those things to the forefront. So it made it, uh, I think, a little bit easier in the long run for me to say, okay, here's what we found out about our institution. How can we move forward? And I think OER and open education are, are ways to do that. So that was great. Um, also our administration, because we're so small and we'd like to be more sustainable in our enrollment, um, I think that this is an excellent way for um, colleges to find, um, recruit their new enrollees and also to retain them. Because if we're, at, if we're offering programs and resources that, are, that make their education affordable and accessible, then it's, it's a win-win. So what was especially good for me was that we were able to customize our plan. And one thing that I was able to do especially was to integrate it into our strategic plan, that is the college's plans, because um, the library does have a part in that. And it already fit into many of the goals that we had and some of the, the objectives. We would also, um, this was with um, the former Dean of Academics, who was my previous supervisor, um, working on a, a program or an initiative, or at least a philosophy on digital learning for the future of our college. And I thought that this fit in perfectly. So the OER component in our action plan fits really well with that. Finally, um, alignment with mission, which is always important, not only to the way we are as a university, but that um, is something very strongly um, looked at by the college as a whole, and I would say particularly administrators and faculty as we figure out ways to um, bring education to people that come here to learn. So um, I, there's, there's just so many things I could say about it. It was really great. Um, one final thing I think that maybe even agreeing to present today um, is evidence of, is that it's really, um, it's about confidence building as well. Uh, I'm not really great with um, being in public, um, I, which sounds kind of strange when you think about the job that I have, but um, I like to be in the background, but this has given me not only, I think the confidence to be able to present these plans because I, real, um, I feel that they're doable, and it's something that is realistic, but also it's given me a passion to, to want to get it done. And so I think for all those reasons and so many more, it's, um, it's definitely an opportunity you should take if you, if you can do it. And um, we had to, um, well, the library paid for a little bit and um, I was able to get professional development funds from our faculty 
Uh, but if you have other opportunities for funding, take advantage of it. I have to say too, um, this is gonna sound strange, but the pandemic actually made it available to me because I don't think I would have been able to raise the funding for travel and, um, and meals and such like that lodging. So um, if you have the opportunity and you wanna do this, it, it's a way to light a fire. So take it and uh, I guess that's all I have to say, thanks. Thank you so much, Carol. You got a lot of love in the chat uh, for the beauty and strength of, of what you were sharing. So thank you so much uh, to everyone today who shared uh, instructors and former participants. I think it gives you a, a good idea of the diversity of experience uh, that this program draws upon and brings together. Um, so we're exactly right on time uh, for having some time for questions. Um, and I invite any of the instructors or participants on this call to please feel free to interject. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourself or put it in the chat, whatever you prefer. Um, does anyone have any questions about the certificate program, uh, the search for 2022? So Kristen, thank you for that. I'm going to put the call for applications um, and it actually that looks a little weird. It doesn't look like I, how I expected, but uh, everything that you need to know about how to apply um, is right there. Uh, we're piloting a new application system, but so far it has been smooth sailing. Um, and so uh, basically, if you don't, uh, it, you know, you need a resume, you answer questions, and there's additional info that you need to um, submit. You don't have to do it in all one sitting. It will, the system will save it for you if you need to draw it out over, you know, a couple days or whatever. Um, so far, it, it seems doable. There are 64 spots uh, that we have open. Uh, so we have cohorts of eight. Um, so one instructor per eight participants. Um, and so any information you might need about how to apply is there in the call for applications, but you also uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, uh, my name is Tanya Groves and I will put, um, let me see. Um, my email is right there on the slide, grow 45 at umn.edu. Um, I think, however, that the application is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so please go to that page and, and think about applying and reach out if you have any other questions. Um, are there any other questions today? Thank you again. I'm just sitting here like taking in all the beautiful things that you said about this program. So it's it's just it's really nice. It's it this is one of my, the best part of parts of my job is to be able to oversee this program and get to work with you all. So thank you. I just uh, want to give a shout out to you, Tanya, because you you, I mean, without you, it's just you know you you bring us all together and you keep us on task as instructors, and so I I really value just working with you and with the OEN team. So thank you so much. I appreciate that, Wade. Yes, OEN has a, a fa fantastic team and it is a pleasure working with them. Any other questions? I had one I dropped in the chat and said to Tanya, but then Dawn's, I mean, you can't really see the chat while you're sharing your screen. Um, and I don't want to hijack this, but would this be appropriate to send some of our liaison librarians to to develop a liaison level action plan? Or are you at this point, since there's only 64 spots, still really wanting to target overall coordinators? Oh, um, no, Kathy. So really any librarians. Um, and I think that the instructors can speak to the fact that there have been um, liaison librarians, um, head librarians, all sorts of librarians in the program. So it's totally appropriate uh, to send them uh, to send them our way. Absolutely. Okay. And so their action plan could be like on the on the digital humanities level, like what I how I can. Okay. 
Yes. And, and I, you know, I, I don't want to make it seem like this is perfect and immutable and unchangeable. Uh, every year we tweak it and change it and think about it and how do we improve it. Um, and we got some really interesting feedback this year. So I don't know exactly what next year is going to look like in terms of action plan. But what I do know is that we will be flexible because most of all, we want it to be pragmatic and practical for your institution so that you can move open ed in, uh, forward on your institution, whatever that means. Um, and I think Wade uh, and Jeannie both spoke to that, that they really wanna work with you and make sure that it's practical. So good question. Any other questions? I have a quick question. Um, so I'm wondering if you get many more applications than the, I think you said 64 that can be in the program. Um, what kinds of things are you looking for in the application to make those decisions about who's accepted and who's not? Sure, so last year, just to give you a sense, I think we got 83 applications last year and for 64 spots. Um, but you know, we are looking for uh, clear answers to our, I think we have three questions. Um, we do ask about your commitment to moving forward diversity, equity, and inclusion on your campus. Uh, we pay close attention to that. Uh, we also are looking for people who have the ability to at least work with someone who can move forward an open initiative on their campus. So that's one of the questions that we ask. We obviously ask for a resume. And then I think we, we ask for, um, you know, what's your view uh, of open ed? Why, are, why do you want to be in this program? So I think those are the questions that we ask. Uh, our application process, I don't think, is overly onerous. We try to be open and transparent. And I think also, uh, as we continue to grow, if we do see a huge uh, increase or uptick in applications, I think we will consider what do we need to do next? Do we need to add instructors? Do we need to increase cohort size? The instructors on the call are probably cringing about that. Um, as an educator myself, uh, small class sizes or reasonable cohort sizes are very important to me. Um, so it would likely be the former. Uh, so do we need to um, hire additional instructors for our team? Um, so uh, we are looking at those kind of things and cognizant of those kind of things. Um, but, you know, that represents uh, pretty clearly, I think, the, the questions that we ask on the application. Um, and so, yeah, and, and we all collectively, uh, all of the instructors and I look together, we have a rating system, uh, we meet, um, and uh, yeah, I, I think we are very interested in admitting as many people as we can. So did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? Thank you for that. I just wanted to go back to Kathy's previous question about liaison librarians and say that some institutions do choose to send multiple people. So for example, this year um, from Texas A&M, I had one person who was a liaison librarian, one person who was um, working with undergraduates, uh, and one person who was in charge of the graduate studies, and they all collaborated together on an action plan. So, um, yeah, but they were kind of coming out at it from different aspects. Thank you for that, Cheryl. Um, and we do see that every year. We see multiple people from an institution who, who apply and, and, and get in. Um, and every year uh, I, I agonize over whether to put them in the same cohort or not. Um, <laughs> and we kind of go back and forth, um, but there is some applicant or there is some participant back and forth about that too. Do you want to be with your colleagues or do you not want to be with your colleagues? So we do our best uh, to, meet, uh, to meet needs and preferences. Other questions about the program, um, I don't know if I said, but if I didn't, the applications are due November 28th. Um, and then you will find out, I think it's the first or second week in January. Uh, and then the program starts the end of February. So that's that's the timeline. Um, and those are the links there. Thank you, Kathy. Super duper watching for the Student Advocate OER certificate course which is not an actual thing yet. I just keep thinking if I act like it is, maybe it will happen. That would be great. Oh, I thought of another question um, after um, what, what you were just talking about and di different people from the same institution being in the same cohort. It made me wonder 
if you've ever had people from the same institution, not in the same cohort, but participate in different years of the program, and you, um, in thinking about that possibility, would it be more beneficial for like myself and a colleague to try to be in the same year, or do you think it would be beneficial as well to be in different years that the program runs? I hope that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, but I don't think I'm going to answer that. So are there any um, alumni or instructors who'd like to take that one? I can. Um, one of my colleagues, um, Maria, um, she started as, um, not started, but she was in the first cohort of um, this um, program. And she um, started uh, when the college was just beginning it, their OER initiative. Um, two, or, uh, two years later, um, myself and uh, my colleague, Marianne, are in the program. And then from there, we um, took, the, took our ideas and took what we learned from the, this program and, and moved um, the action plan for, forward into creating a more sustainable um, environment for the OER initiative and stuff. Um, we valued the, um, what we, we leaned on our colleague um, who had participated a few years ago um, and looked at her action plan and then looked at um, where we could potentially take our action plans moving forward in the next, you know, into a more um, sustainable environment. So there's definite value in um, in having um, colleagues participate before, um, at the same time, and possibly even colleagues that will participate after you as well. Thank you. That really helps to think about that as a way to like build on each other's um, previous work. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any other responses to that question? Any other comments about that? Okay, then any additional questions? Any final questions? That wait time is hard for me, but I'm trying to learn from my boss, Dave, who's like the master of wait time. <laughs> so before I wrap this wonderful session up, thank you for coming. Thank you for those of you who participated and helped answer questions and shared your perspective. Um, thank you, Kathy. Uh, I feel like having gone through it will make better use of my colleagues time and energy as they go through it after. Yeah, I, I appreciate that that perspective. Um, any final questions before we wrap this up? Um, and then I will make sure that the recording is available on our webpage. Okay, well then thank you so much for coming. I hope if you've um, been here and you've heard enough to make you want to apply. Um, and uh, just thank you again for everybody who came and have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. Bye everyone, thank you.